Hello and welcome to another computing video and this is the second video in our little series uh, introducing the language JavaScript or ECMA Script 5 quite quickly and in this video I'd like to look at some of the syntax, some of the keywords that are available. Now the first thing I want to start with is that C and Java, they're curly brace languages and so is JavaScript. JavaScript is a curly brace languages, blocks of code are defined, uh, defined by curly braces and some of the keywords that we'll come across are familiar uh, to C programmers and uh, to Java programmers. And so we'll have a look at if, we'll have a look at C style for loops, while, switch, uh, try and catch in this video. Let's start off with an if statement. And so let's, uh, this code here, we've just declared a variable and we've said that a is one. And then we're going to say, well, if, and we put the condition in brackets, if a is bigger than zero, then run this first block. Then there's an else and there's another block to run if this condition was not true. And so let's grab that and let's put this into Repolit and let's uh, run this. And first of all, I can spot there's a typo. Sorry, I've not put the closing quote on that string there. Let's go and do that right now. And let's run that one. And sure enough, it prints out a bigger than zero. That's what it's logged out because, well, we set A to be one and we did this condition and the condition was true. And so the first block has executed. And the other thing we've got going on in here is we can see a little bit of the object syntax. There is an object called console that's a global variable that's available. And that is the JavaScript console that normally you would access from the developer tool. So normally you'd go up to tools, web developer, and uh, let's, uh, if we toggle tools, here we go. And now we've got a little JavaScript console down here, uh, which we would normally be outputting to, uh, except that we are running this in Repolit that is also going to print out the things in our, uh, that we log out to the console on the right hand side. Uh, but so we run that. And in this case, it doesn't come down here because, well, Repolit's directing it over to this side. Um, but normally that console you would be um, accessing through the, uh, the developer tools in your browser. Uh, and we've got this uh, dot notation for calling methods that will be familiar to JavaScript programmers. So I've got the object console and I've called the log method on it and I've passed a parameter that is a string. Uh, and so that is what it's done. OK, ifs, relatively straightforward. Uh, now, there is, however, a little bit of a note on comparators. So JavaScript is weakly typed, and this is going to mean it's going to end up with three equals. So over here, we've already got one of these. We've got a single equals, which is used for assignment. So I've declared the variable a, and I've set it to be one. Um, but JavaScript is weakly typed. And so let us have a look at what happens if I ask it, is the number one equals equals, so normal Java style is this equal to, um, uh, to the string one. And if I run that, I get the answer true. And that's because double equals lets it do type conversions. So it lets it go from the number one to the string one, or the string one to the number one. And so, well, one does equal the string two in that way. And so if I was to ask it, is one not equal to the string one, I'm going to end up getting false. Uh, however, uh, to help you out with this, JavaScript has a triple equals operator, which will not do type coercions, uh, type conversions. Uh, so if I say is one the number, is that triple equals to the string one? And it will say, no, it's not. They're different types. And <clears throat> if I want to do the opposite of that, well, it is exclamation mark equals equals. And so that is the, 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 the triple equals not, if you like. And so I should get true that one is not equal to the string one when you consider the types. And sure enough, that comes out as true. Uh, so that is my little note on comparators, that we've got three equals. We've got the one equals for assignment, two equals for equality allowing type conversions, and three equals uh, an equality type uh, is equality and a check for the types being identical. Apologies for the typo on that slide there. Um, OK. Now, C and Java have switch as well, which is another way of doing, well, it's it's a slightly shorter way of doing if, else if, if, else if, etc., where you're wanting to check um, one variable against a set of conditions. And JavaScript also has a switch. And let's copy this one across. Actually, let's first of all, let's copy the code across 
and in here we can see that we've got switch and this condition here new date dot get day that's going to get executed once uh, so first of all let me just comment out that code and let me just show you what new date does so new date is going to create a date object uh, that represents uh, today and so okay that tells you when I recorded this video uh, if I've reused it in the future people might spot oh you've reused a video um, at some point I'll probably update it uh, let's get the day from that date so let us call a method on that object to get the current day and we run that and we happen to get the number one which corresponds to Monday uh, so that's the day of the week effectively so in here in my switch statement I have said switch of uh, new date dot get day so that should return me the number one representing Monday and so that is going to get evaluated once and so I've got the number one and I'm comparing that against these conditions in the case where it's zero we're going to do this and then we're going to break in the case where it's six we're going to do this and then we're going to break in the case where it's default in other words none of those previous conditions triggered this is what we're going to do and so if I run that I should expect a weekday to print out and it does there we go today is a weekday uh, now something to note uh, which is common to C and to Java as well uh, is what's called fall through so if I was to put in here case one and uh, let me just uh, line that up console.log of Monday and I don't put the word break after it then it's going to print out Monday a weekday so what's happened is it's come down it's got this one it's hit this case it said oh that label there that 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 case that's the that's the correct one execute this statement hasn't hit a break or a return so it's just fallen through and it's just kept executing statements and so it's called a weekday as well whereas if I was to insert a break statement that would stop it from falling through to the next case and so that is a behavior that has its origins in C uh, was carried through in Java and it's carried through in JavaScript here as well uh, do while loops uh, these are uh, again common to uh, many curly brace languages and so let us paste this one in and so what I've said here is I would like you to do this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a variable rand and I'm going to set it to a random number and I'm going to log it out I'm going to print it out and then at the end of the loop I'm going to check whether rand was less than 0 0.75 and if it was less than 0 0.75 I'm going to go around the loop again and I'm going to do that again and then I'm going to do the check at the end and if it was I'm going to go around again and so let us run this and the thing you'll notice is it runs the loop but the last one here 0 0.8 is bigger than 0 0.75 uh, let's run that again 0.76 bigger than 0 0.75 the last one 0.89 bigger than 0.75 and so the reason the last one here is always coming out bigger than 0.75 uh, is because we are always printing it out before we do the check and then if it's um, bigger than 0.75 we stop but we've already printed it out and so that one runs at least once does the check at the end uh, however it does also have while loops that do the check at the beginning and so here let us grab this one and so let's paste this in and so what I've said I want a variable rand and initially rand is undefined and then in the condition at the beginning of the uh, in the condition check I'm actually assigning rand to be math.random and that is going to evaluate to whatever the random number was that I just put into rand and I'm comparing that as to whether it's less than 0.75 and I'm only continuing to print it out if that is less than 0.75 and so if I run this one I should find that it stops as soon as that number gets bigger than 0.75 and so it never prints out anything bigger than 0.75 it doesn't continue and execute console.log for something bigger than 0.75 so smaller than, smaller than, smaller than, smaller than uh, lots of them but smaller than etc okay so that is the difference between do while and while which is common to many curly brace languages next one to introduce you to is C style for loops uh, if you've done C or Java you may be familiar with these already and so let's paste these in paste this in 
And so what this is saying is four, and we've got three bits separated by semicolons. And so at the beginning, I'm saying four, and I'm declaring a variable a, and for that area, I'm going to initialize it to zero. And then before we want we run the loop each time, I want you to check whether a is smaller than five. And then at the end of the loop, I want you to increment a, uh, and then you know, kind of come right back around, do the condition check, and if it's still smaller than the five, we're going to execute the loop again, and then we're going to increment a again. And so this should print out zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Well, a a won't be less than five for five, and so it won't execute this for five, and so we should just get zero, one, two, three, four. And there we do zero, one, two, three, four. Uh, now in this case, I have declared the variable inside the condition. Uh, I could, if I wanted, declare it outside, and I could say, well, a is undefined, and now here I am setting a is zero, and if I run that, that should behave the same way. Uh, exceptions. Now, exceptions are something you don't have in C, but you do have in Java, and so many uh, many students who, or people watching this video who've uh, done Java before uh, will be reasonably familiar with exceptions and the idea of them. Uh, let me copy this code and explain what's going on though. So what I'm going to do, um, I am going to first of all try to take the size of null. I'm going to, null is null, it's a, a null reference, nothing there. And I'm going to try and call a method on it. And I should get an error. Type error. Null has no properties. So this doesn't work. And if I had some code after that, um, let's just put a console.log of did this happen. And I should find that, no, my execution stopped. I hit an error. It stopped. Console.log did this happen? Never happened. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and catch that error. And I'm just going to tell the code, look, try to do this, null.size, and catch the error and put it into, um, put the error object that you get if an error happens into the variable err. And then if we get one, console.log, err, that error object, I want to get its message property. And then afterwards, let's go console.log of did this happen. And so if I run this one, well, that threw the error. This caught the error. And for those of you familiar with Java, this should look somewhat similar, except that we've not got a type before error. Uh, in Java, you might have something like uh, no such property uh, exception error saying what type of error you're you're catching but javascript is dynamically typed and so we, we don't declare those kinds of type annotations and so we just say no no i just want to catch exceptions and get it into the error object and then we're going to execute this body of the code and so then it has executed console.log from the error object get the message property and the message property come out null has no properties and then afterwards, because I've caught the exception, it has continued executing the rest of the code. And so console.log, did this happen? Yes, it printed it out. Did this happen? Yes. OK, and so that is uh, exceptions. And one of the things you'll notice, however, is when I prepared these notes, I clearly tried it out in a different browser. And so actually the error message I was getting was cannot read property size of null, uh, which is a slightly different message than Firefox has given me here saying null has no properties. So there are still some subtle differences between in Java uh, between different browsers. Uh, let us now go on to declaring a function. And so here, what I'm going to do, let us declare a function called takes two arguments. And all this function is going to do is it's going to print them out. So function called takes two arguments, arguments A and B, and it is going to console.log A is A and B is B. Now the thing I'm going to do though, well, let's first of all, let's just click run to show that worked nothing's happened okay now I'm going to call that and uh, well let's start off by saying takes two arguments of one and two and so it should print out that a is one and b is two sure enough a is one b is two there they are now let's take away the second parameter let us just call takes two arguments of one uh, in a language such as Java 
it would uh, complain that that's not the same function because in Java, fun uh, method overloading means that a function that declares two parameters is not the same as a function that declares one parameter, uh, as a function called passing one parameter. Um, JavaScript, that's not the case. Let's run this, and what we're going to find is it says a is 1, b is undefined. So it has called takes two arguments. We gave it one argument, so it set that in 1. We didn't give it the second argument, so b is now undefined, the value undefined. And so that is what it's logged out. Console.log, a is 1, b is undefined. And so that is a difference between uh, JavaScript and Java. And uh, it's actually quite common for JavaScript frameworks to take advantage of this, to uh, that effectively the later parameters in your function definition are optional. You don't have to pass them. Uh, and inside the function, you can test whether they were defined or not uh, and start acting upon them if they were there and otherwise provide defaults if they were not there. Uh, so this is a, uh, a difference between JavaScript and Java. And that's where I'm going to stop that video. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about how in JavaScript functions are values and we can pass them around and do interesting things with them.